Hey, Pop. Hey, Pop. Hey, Pop. Let's throw the ball. We can do some charging too, but let's throw the ball first. Look at that. Look at that. Hey, look at that. Wow, good puppy. Where'd it go? There it is. Yes. So she's officially gone into adolescence. She's doing a lot more keep away. Um, she's not coming into the house when I call her in from the yard. I've had to lock her outside a couple times. And uh, so one thing we're gonna work on today is recall, but that's right on schedule. It's what's to be expected. Sit. Hey, sit. Yes, good girl. Other than that, she's in good spirits. The adolescence phase is usually in my opinion, it's the hardest phase. A lot of people think puppies are hard because they bite and they pee all over everything. Those are really simple temporary problems for the most part. Most people make it through the puppy phase. It's adolescence where they fail. And maybe they've been so beaten up in the puppy stage that by the time the dog gets to adolescence and the puppy loses that I love you part of their emotions, they're just like, I don't have any time for you anymore. You were hard as a puppy and now you don't even love me, you know? <laughs> and that's, I think, how a lot of people interpret adolescence. Um, the way I interpret adolescence now is that the dog is gonna have a natural propensity for conflict, that they're gonna become more, you know, we're gonna use words here that are anthropomorphic for sure. They're gonna become more defiant, more stubborn. These, in my opinion, form an important function for an animal in the wild of pushing it away from its parents and brothers and sisters so they can start their own family without any inbreeding, so that they can fight in that hierarchy, determine where they sit amongst their peer group. Are they the top or the bottom? Are they gonna end up being the one breeding or the one just on the sidelines? Things like that. These are important for a, uh, the functioning of a group of animals. And, um, and because of that, we have to structure that conflict. Um, some people want to just avoid that conflict, and, and that can work to a certain extent. Uh, like, you got to pick your battles more at adolescence. I feel like in puppyhood, you can very much more um, just fight all the battles, because they're so easy to win. But in adolescence, it's better to pick your battles, but, like, actually pick them. Don't go, oh, I guess we'll do this one and not that one. Picking them means, like, set them up. Like, I know recalls always gets worse in adolescence that's a battle i'm going to pick and i'm going to introduce like you saw in the last couple of videos introduce the concept of correction because that's exactly the kind of stimulus that a dog would be expecting at this point of life is getting into fights with other dogs happens at adolescence then they mature out of it and their fights go away and what you want to do is establish a relationship not destroy it and people destroy it by getting angry with the dog and they fail to establish by, develop, uh, by delivering fair and meaningful punishments and other consequences to the dog's poor behavior. And that, 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 to me, that also destroys the relationship. So you can destroy it in two ways. One is by not offering the discipline the dog needs. And the second is by just offering unfair, angry discipline and it's not actually discipline at that point because it's not for teaching purposes, it's just to get your anger out. That's not healthy. Although I think that is more like what happens in the wild. I don't think a dog thinks, oh, I'm gonna offer this fair correction. I think a dog gets angry, punishes a dog, but there's so much space and they're speaking the same language that it's easier for them than it is for a human and a dog. Anyways, as you can see, her toy drive is still excellent. So what I'm gonna work on is recall with yummy treats. And in particular, I'm gonna work on being able to clip the leash on her. I'm not gonna do a lot of reps on this exercise, and then once I'm done with that, I'm gonna do my normal heel, here, heel sit around the bowl of food. Girl, come, sit. Very nice, sit. She needs to sit while I put on her leash. 
Hi, you're supposed to be sitting. Good. Which, by the way, this is the white leash recall skill, anyways. Sit. Sit. Yes. Good. I'm going to unclip her, tell her free. Free. And now I'm going to wait for her to wander away, however long it takes. If I need to, I'll kick the ball. nice to have a magnetic puppy when you want it. I'll just kind of walk around the field until she gets distracted by something interesting. You're very cute. Sit. It's always funny too, and I know people get frustrated with this because like, oh, in training, my dog doesn't do this. They only do it at home in the yard. And yes, I need to sit up there with her in the yard with the other dogs, calling her off of the other dogs. I might be able to set the camera up in such a way that I can film that. It's not easy to film doorways, you know, but uh, uh, calling her away from my other dogs while they're playing would be something that's highly valuable. Maggie, come. Good. Sit. 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 Good. Sit. I don't want her to associate. Sit. The leash coming off with being released. Yes. Free. I want her to associate the word free with being allowed to run off. So when I unclip the leash, I repeat the command and give her a treat afterwards to keep her with me. You're gonna be perfect now. Yeah, and I, I'm just trying, I was hoping to just kind of demonstrate this exercise for you. But what'll really happen is I'll go out to the lake with my dogs, do my hunting training. And as I'm setting up, I'll just wander around the field. And uh, as she wanders away to sniff some tree or something, that's the opportunity she's gonna have to come when called. Um, and we'll make it a fun game. We'll take some of the conflict out of it, but there's a little conflict here. You're seeing she's jumping up to get the treat. I'm correcting her for that. I'm just, I'm just using that opportunity to set the, I know people don't like these words, but the hierarchy, the, the discipline, whatever word you want to use, boundary, um, whatever word you want to use, that's what I'm doing. And I really do think that that's in a pack how of the parent dogs maintain dominance over their puppies. They start with dominance because they're the parents and the puppies are helpless. But as the dogs reach adolescence, they get into fights with their parents. That happens. And if the parents were good parents and they've laid down law and order a little bit, the puppies will be easier to manage. If they haven't, the puppies can go crazy. Good. If you want more information on dominance and submission and what science actually says about it, I highly recommend following Dr. Roger Brantes on the, from the Ethology Institute. Uh, there's a lot of misconceptions still floating around out there, and uh, it's too bad because understanding what our dogs are, including their relationship to dominance and submission, would really benefit our relationships with them. And I'm not endorsing old school techniques of training the dog that had nothing to do with dominance and submission. Uh, they may have had the desired effect just because any structure is better than no structure. But once we understand that, then some structures are better than other structures, right? Like you don't want to, in my opinion, you don't want a dictatorship unless you have a real problem dog. You want you want a fair mutual relationship with your with your your friend. Uh, a relationship between friends, not a relationship between, you know, a soldier and its master, which a lot of that old school dog training comes from the military, so it's not surprising that it's very militaristic. Okay, let's do our here heel sits. Sit. Good. 
We're going to try to do quarters of the bowl, so we'll do four repetitions. Sit. Now. Very calm, slow correction. I don't have to jump up and scream at the dog or anything. Nice auto-correct from her. Come. Heel. Sit. Good sit. Sit. She's breaking more, so I'm going to start holding the correction past compliance. Good. There's a few ways to increase the punishment. No. Sit. One way is for me to pop the collar a lot harder, which I'm, uh, is not my preference. My preference now is to hold the correction a little bit longer. No. I know. I know. Sit. Good. Come. Heel. Good. Sit. That was a good one. Sit. One more and then you can get the food. Come. Good. Heel. Sit. Yes, that was pretty good. I'm pleased with that. Maggie, come. Sit. Yes. Sit. Sit. She's hungry today. Sit. I, I think I mentioned recently that she has a bladder infection she's getting meds for. That may be affecting her mood and also her hunger. Sit. Sit. Come. Heel. Sit. Good sit. Sit. I'm going to try giving a little more pressure. Sit. See if adding some pressure to it helps the sit or her. Heel. Sit. I liked that recall. Sit. She's going to get a treat. Yes. Sit. 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 No. Sit. Don't be silly. Oh, you're going to flop. You want to be dragged again? Hi. Come here. Let's face you that way. Good. Sit. Good. Sit. So silly. Sit. Come. Heel. Sit. Very nice. Yes. Okay, for this repetition, I'm not going to do as many recalls. I'm just going to do heel sit. I'm going to do it in a circle around the bowl. And that's building towards getting a sit in motion. I might do a circle. I might do a line straight away and back. I haven't decided yet. Just kind of feel it out. Heel. Good. Good. Heel. Sit. Good. Sit. 
good okay now I'm gonna do a line straight away and back and see if I can't get her to sit while I'm moving without me stopping Yes, at a girl. She stopped in motion. Hey, 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 it's right here. Go ahead, go get your food. Go get your food. Yes. Yeah, that's a good stop in motion. Um, most dogs get it on the first training session if you have good timing. Uh, it's not perfect. Um, it still needs to be proofed and, and improved, and her heel needs to straighten out if we were going that direction of competition obedience. For me, it's just about teaching control so that I have control of her anywhere we go in public, at a show, I can walk through the gauntlet of dogs at an Ozark show. So actually, it might be useful to understand why I'm posting obedience lessons to a nosework group. There's so many times in nosework where you need, or you it, it would be beneficial to have strong obedience on a dog, like walking through the parking lot, in between all of the dogs barking, at the staging area, at the start line, leaving the search area, um, all, all sorts of environments. And that's not even including the nightmare situations like you forgot to close your crate door and your dog runs out of your crate. That's happened to me. I'm embarrassed, but it happened. Um, things like that. Or another dog gets off leash and runs up to your dog. I want to be able to control my dog so that I can focus on controlling the aggressing dog. Um, if I have two out of control dogs, that's way worse than having one in control dog, one out of control dog. So. Anyways, I expect a, a certain level of obedience in my competition dogs who do nose work uh, so that they have the skills to safely manage that environment. So that's why I'm teaching that in addition to teaching this for her owner so that her owner can take her out in public and know that she has some control over the dog. Now, a lot of this is gonna need to be maintained by the owner, uh, so it's not gonna immediately transfer, but she's gonna have a solid foundation uh, when she goes home for the owner to build off of. So, anyways, hope you enjoyed that. It was a good session. We're gonna let, give her her medicine and give her a nap. And then we'll probably do some elevation later.